Hello and welcome to another optimization practice problem video. So in this video we're going to be doing the cardboard box problem, right? It's a very common one that people often use to introduce this concept and it's also just a very a very good uh, it's a very nice problem because it's also very easy to physically demonstrate, right? So that's something that's that's pretty cool as well. So you'll often see this used as a demonstration problem in a lot of a lot of high school classes for example. So it's a lot of fun. But once again, I just do, I want, to, I want to reiterate, don't try and memorize the problems. Learn the, just apply the same steps and sometimes see if you can pick up heuristics that are associated with each individual problem. Because that's going to be a much better way to go about these things than to just memorize what to do, or memorize everything for each problem. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this. So we're given a piece of cardboard that's eight inches tall, right, and three inches wide. And we want to cut out the corners to make a box. So what that basically entails is we're going to have a piece of cardboard that looks something like this. Let's forgive my drawing skills. Uh, so we're going to have this side is going to be the shorter side. So that's going to be uh, three inches, three inches wide. This guy is going to be our eight inch side. So it's going to be eight inches tall. And we're going to make a cut on each, uh, around each corner, right? And this each cut is going to have a, con a constant length. Maybe let's put that a little closer to the edge here. So we're going to cut out the corners, and each cut is going to have a constant length. We're going to call that x. So we have all these cuts of length x all around here, right? And then what we're going to do once we've cut out all the, made all these cuts we're going to fold the box over right so we'd fold it along this side fold it along this side every we fold along these these cuts we fold along those cuts and so what the result is is we would have this nice little box like this so look something like this forgive my drawing skills they're just running just running out of space there so I couldn't quite make this box as long as I wanted to. Yeah. So, and then of course down here, we also do the same thing. Okay. So, and we also trail off like that. So that's basically what we'd, we'd be doing there. Right? And this X, how that would relate to this particular, to the final 3D shape, is that this x is actually going to tell us how how um, high the box is, right? How how the thickness of this box kind of that kind of gives us our third dimension to things here, right? So that's why this x is pretty important. Right? So now let's look at the actual problem. So the problem is to determine what height, right, or what value of x, what cut we need to make, will maximize the volume of our box. Okay. So let's go right into it and start start applying our steps here. Right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to write our goal, as always, right? We want to start with our goal. And of course, if you remember, the reason for this is so that we can stay grounded in reality. Because there's going to be a lot of times when we might forget, for example, what exactly we're supposed to be finding. So this helps us stay, in ground, stay grounded with reality and make sure that we're finding what the problems are actually asking for. So our goal here is going to be to maximize to maximize volume okay so now that we have our goal let's find let's put together an equation our second step of course is to find an equation which uh, gives us this particular thing in this case volume so let's go back up to this picture here and see if we can put some variables to this problem so let's see if we can put some variables to these pictures here that'll help us um, sort of uh, to set, a, set up an equation. So we know that x is going to be our height, right? That's based off of this thing right here. So this longer side right here, right, which is, which we're going to say is a, a longer side, let's call that L, right, the length. And we'll call this uh, other smaller side here, we'll call that W, okay? So we're going to say that our volume is going to be equal to, uh, L W X. Okay. So 
we have an equation here that tells us volume. However, that equation for this particular moment is a bit of a is not entirely useful to us because that's an equation of three variables, right? There's three different variables in that, that equation there. So we can't really do any calculus with it at this time, right? We need multivariable calculus to do that, which we simply don't have. So what we're going to need to do, right, is we're going to need to come down here, right, and do our third step, which is to find an equation of one variable. And how do we do this? We're going to need to apply a constraint. And the constraint, of course, is some bit of information that's given to us in the problem, which sort of restricts us in a way, but also gives us a little more direction to solving this problem. Right? So let's go up here and see if we can figure out a constraint. As a starting point, let's think about how these sides W and L relate to this piece of cardboard overall. So we know what they look like on the three-dimensional box, but let's see where they would go on this uh, actual uh, piece of cardboard. So we know that we're making folds alongside, along these, these cuts, right? So we're making folds along the cuts. So when we do that, the side lengths are actually going to be what's left over after making the cut. The side lengths on this box is going to be what's left over after making the cut, right? So really what the side lengths are going to be is this guy right here is going to be our w right and this guy would also be our w right and this side is going to be l this little piece right here is going to be l and as will this little guy okay and that's just based on uh translating what we see in this three-dimensional picture to the two-dimensional picture so that's basically how that works. Now let's see if we can use this to come up with some kind of some kind of constraint. Let's think about how these relate to the entire side as a whole. Now you might notice, let's do this in, in blue, you might notice that these two x's and this l make up this are what combine to make up this entire side. And that side we know has to be eight inches. Right? So we can say, right, okay, so we have L, add two X's to that, and this entire thing has to be equal to 8 inches. Right? Same thing applies to this side. We have two X's and a W that must add up to equal 3 inches. Okay? And now we can solve these things for L and W, and that's going to give us constraints that we can use to plug into this equal that we can use to make this an equation of one variable, right? So we're going to have L equals shoving the 2x over there. It's going to be 8 minus 2x. Same thing for W. W is going to be 3 minus 2x. So that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is our constraint that we can use to turn this equation from an equation of three variables into an equation of just one variable. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to have, let's maybe stick to magenta. So we're going to have V, and not just V right now, but now we have V as a function of just X, right? Because now we have an equation of just one variable, and that's going to be, um, so we're going to have L, which is substituting for L, is going to give us 8 minus 2X. Then for W is going to be 3 minus 2X. And all of that just times x, right? So we have an equation of one variable, which we got from that constraint. Cool. So the next step is going to be, um, if we maybe scroll down a little bit here, is where we're going to actually start doing calculus. And that step is going to be to find our extreme values. But what extreme value are we looking for? Well, if we go back up to our goal here, remember we're trying to maximize volume, so we're really going to be looking for a max. So again, that's why writing the goal is so helpful, because it helps us stay grounded in reality and remember what we're looking for, right? So we're looking for a max. Now, to do this, to, fi to do the steps to find that, we're going to need to find critical points, right? And to do that, we're going to need to take a derivative and set that equal to zero. So you could go right up here and say, okay, I'm going to use a product rule 
and find that derivative, but it's not gonna work out as nicely. I mean, it's still, it's not wrong. It's just not gonna work out as nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna foil this out. I'll do, I'm gonna foil this out for you guys. And then we're gonna do, we'll, we'll, we'll um, do our analysis on that, okay? Cool, so we foiled that together. Uh, you're welcome to look at the steps in case you, you missed any of that or you have can, if you're, you're confused. But I just felt I would go through this quickly because it's not as important of a deal in this problem, okay? So the first step, defining extreme values, if you remember, is to find our critical points, right? We wanna find our critical points. So to do that, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna take the derivative of this guy and set him equal to zero. So we're gonna have v prime of x. So using a power rule, we're gonna get this to be 24 minus 44 x squared plus 12, 12 x squared. Sorry, that should not be 22 x squared. That should be, sorry, that should be just 44 x plus 12 x squared and we're going to set this equal to zero now that looks very daunting to deal with initially but what we can do is because we're setting this equal to zero we can go ahead and divide everything by four right we're going to divide everything by four because all of these have a common factor of four just to make this look a little uh, less intimidating to deal with so we're going to have uh, 24 divided by four is just going to be six minus 11 x plus uh, we're going to have 3x squared. That's all going to be equal to 0. Cool. Now, that one does, it doesn't really look like it's going to factor very nicely. But So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our quadratic formula. right? So we're going to have x equals negative b, which is going to be minus, minus 11, plus or minus the square root of, uh, let's see, that's going to be minus 11 squared minus 4 times a, which in this case is going to be 3, times c, which is going to be 6. Okay. And then we're going to divide this all by 2a, which is going to be 2 times 3. Okay. And now we have this, we can go ahead and um, simplify some things. Right? So 2 times 3 is obviously 6. These two minus signs are going to cancel, so we're just going to have a positive 11. 11 squared is going to be 121, and that minus sign is irrelevant because we're squaring, right? It's going to be a positive answer regardless. Then minus, we have 4 times 3 times 6, so 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 6 is 72, right? So what this ends up going here, what this ends up becoming is we're going to have 11 plus or minus the square root of 121, um, minus 72 over 6. 121 minus 72 is just going to be 49, right? So we have 11 plus or minus square root of 49 over 6. And now, and very nicely, the square root of 49 is just going to be 7. So this is actually uh, going to be just 11 plus or minus 7 over 6. So this is going to be, this tells us, right, that x has to equal either 18 over 6, which is going to be, uh, so it's going to be 18 over 6, or it's going to be 11 minus 7, which is uh, 4 over 6. And this is just going to be 3 or 2 thirds. So there's two solutions to x here, which is going to be 3 or 2 thirds. So we have two critical points that we need to look at. Hope that made sense. So now that we have our critical points, we can go ahead and actually do our second derivative test. You are also welcome to use a first derivative test. It's not wrong, but since we have a, a quadratic or a polynomial, or since we have a polynomial that we're dealing with here, right? It's a little bit easier to use a second derivative test because it the polynomial will get get simpler as you take more derivatives. So that's why I'm using a second. First is also fine. It might be a little bit more work, but it's also equally correct to use. So for a second derivative test, right? And 
So we're going to have to find our second derivative, which is going to be, um, so we, maybe not, not f, but we're going to have v double prime of x, which will be, if you scroll up here, so the first derivative is going to be this guy right here. Don't use this. We're going to use this over here. So that's going to be minus 44 plus 24x squared. We have minus 44 plus 24, not even x squared, just 24x, right? And so that's our second derivative. Now we're going to plug in each critical point into that and see what happens. Okay? So we'll start with v double prime of, let's start with 3, right? So this is going to be minus 44 plus 24 times 3. Now, you might wonder, do I have to actually go out and calculate what 24 times 3 is? And I, I agree, that's kind of tedious. But what, what, do we, what do we care about with a second derivative test? We only care about the sign, right? We don't actually care what this number comes out to. We don't care about the magnitude. We just care about what sign it is. And I know that 24 times 3 is already going to be much bigger than 44, right? Because 24 times 2 is 48, which is already bigger than 44. So 24 times 3 is going to be much bigger than 44. So I know right off the bat that this is going to be greater than 0. Right? So this thing is going to be greater than 0. So the conclusion I draw from that is that we will have a min at x equals 3. Cool. But we're not done yet. We still have to test the other critical point. And uh, so we have v double prime of 2 thirds this time, which is going to be um, minus 44 plus 24 times 2 thirds. So we can multiply the, we can simplify. This actually simplifies quite nicely. So we have 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. So minus 44 plus 16. I know that's going to be negative because 16 is way smaller than 44. So I can just go ahead and say this is less than 0. So we have a maximum at x equals 2 thirds. So we have two critical points, each of which tells us a different, which each of which is a different extreme value. But which one of these is the one that we want? So again, that's why it's so important to have our goal down. So we're going to scroll back up to our goal here, and we'll remember that our goal is to maximize, right? So because our goal is to maximize, we are we will say that the one that we really care about is this one. So x equals two thirds is the one that we care about. We don't care so much about, about this guy, right? So at this point, it's also really good to do a quick domain check, right? So we're going to do a quick domain check to make sure that that's uh, in the right right area, right? That's, that, that answer makes sense, right? So let's see what domain, domains we can apply here. So if we go back up here, let's think about the smallest cut we can make. What's the smallest cut we can make? Well, zero, right? The smallest cut we can make is going to be zero because we can't have a negative cut. So the smallest cut is going to be zero. The largest cut, now that one's going to be slightly more involved. So let's take a look. So if you look back up here, what if I made x, let's say if I made x 1.5, right? That means that my cut would be over here. So I'd be cutting the box in half along this, this line here. Right? So if I chose half the side length of this, that would already cut into half the box. So I can't really cut any further. If I choose x to be bigger than that, it would be kind of like I'm it would just be like I'm I, I'm running out of cardboard here. Right? So that's why the smallest number I'm gonna choose, the, the, the biggest value that x can be, or the biggest cut I can make is going to be half the smallest side, right? So that's going to be uh, 1.5, right? Now, it doesn't really make physical sense to make a cut at either of these places, right? So just, that's just because making a cut of zero is just a part, is just going to give us a flat sheet, 
and making a cut at 1.5 gives us makes that we're cutting the sheet in half right so our domain is going to be the open interval with an, the open interval 0 to 1.5 right and that's for x right the domain is going to be for x okay is two thirds on that domain so let's so is two thirds on the domain yes it is so two thirds is in domain right so that's that satisfies everything so we can make the conclusion right we can make the final conclusion that having a height making a height of two thirds will maximize volume okay and of course this would be our final step which is uh, i think step five which is conclusion so yeah that's step four step five which is going to be our conclusion and of course let's not forget our units right so that's really important so it's going to be two-thirds inches right? and we always want to use units because it's a real world problem so it'll be two-thirds inches will maximize volume so yeah that's basically it if you found this video helpful please do like share subscribe leave a comment and check out some other videos see you next time